Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic, um, where I'm going to take a look at this viewer requested puzzle. Um, I'm working through a series of these over the weekend. Um, I think I've got three to do. This is the second one. Um, and I'm not sure how soon I'll publish them. I may publish them as a block of uh, three videos quite quickly, so maybe you'll even see this tonight. Um, now, uh, what can I tell you? 7th of February, New York Times hard puzzle. Uh, I know no more than that, apart from that the person who sent it in found it tricky. Um, so, without further ado, let's take a look at it. Now, I can see immediately I can place a 1 here. I have a 1 and a 1, so I know that the 1s are in either this position or this position, and there's a 1 over here. So, let's put that in. Let's make normal pencil marks as we go through. So again, in 3x3 three three blocks, if I know a number is limited to exactly two cells, I'll make little pencil marks like this. Uh, you can see we have a 1 here and a 1 here, and a 1 here. So this square must be a 1. Let's mark 1's in it here. Okay, and then we have a 1 and a 1 here. So the 1's in this 3x3 three three block are locked into one of these two positions. Now that rules out there being a 1 in this cell. So we know the 1 is now up here. OK. Now, this cell looks restricted to me. So you can, this is something to get good at. Um, as, as you improve at Sudoku, you should always be comparing the contents of rows and columns, obviously, as you're scanning. Now, I don't know how restricted this is, but let's just check. One, two, three, four, can be five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so this is this is a, a naked single, as it's called, which means that the only cell that can go into that square is a five. Now, I didn't know that when I was looking at this square. All I was doing was scanning and noticing that there was a big difference between the contents of the column and the contents of the row. And there were several numbers in it. I don't. I didn't really see this six as operating on this, or maybe if I did, it was very much subconsciously. Um, you know, you can see something similar going on here. This this square is also feels to me like it's quite restricted. I don't think it's as restricted. If we just check three, four, five, six, seven, or a nine into that one, so not strict notation there. So I'm not going to actually label it, but just get as as you're working on improving your Sudoku, scanning and comparing rows and columns is an absolutely core, core skill. Now, what can we do with this 5, if anything? Um, well, we can get, oh, we can actually put a 5 in there, look. So, 5, 5, now this 5 here rules out this square, this must be a 5. Um, this must be a 5. What else, if anything? Ah, this must be a 5. It's the only place a 5 can go. So you have a 5 here and a 5 here. That means this is a 5. I've got a lot now in uh, this column. Um, so what do we need to fill the column? 2, 3, and 6. So 2. So you can see we've got a series of doubles, really, down the, down the column, but nothing nothing limited enough to us to us uh, to notate it um, so what next sixes, sixes. ah okay yes um, let's have a look at this three by three block this three is nice because it forces a three to be pencil marked into those two squares and look we have a nine and a nine here so we also can pencil mark nines into those two squares as well. So there's a three nine double in uh, in row five. That means these two numbers must be four and eight. It means eight eight. So we can pencil mark eights into those two squares. Pencil mark fours into these two squares. I would also recommend. Oh, in fact, we can place a 5 up here as well. We've got 5, 5. This can be a 5 because there's a 5 here. We, we might finish the 5s now. So now we have effectively 6 numbers in column 2. And we're looking for 2, 7, and 9. 
bother. We can't do anything with that, I don't think. This square is limited to 7 or 9. There was another square that was limited to 7 or 9 earlier. This one. So 7s and 9s are interesting. OK, I'm just going to notate that because they were repeated, just in case. 7, 9, 7, 9. Not strict notation. Uh, but let's carry on going. And now we need to check row 5. So 2, 4, 7 and 8 to complete. Ah, so this square you can see can only be a 2 because we have a 4, a 7 and an 8 in the column. So that's a 2. That allows us to pencil mark 2's into these two squares. And we need a 3 and a 6 to complete this column. Um, I am a bit tempted. It's a, this is the difference between a paper solve and a computer solve. Paper solve, you should all have a method of recording squares that can only contain two digits. What I do is I write on the line beneath the cell a little three and a little six. So I don't sort of pollute the Snyder notation, the, these twos, these ones that I have been including. But I have a way of remembering if a cell can only be one of two numbers. And I actually, if I'm using pencil, I'll shade the cell as well so that they, these cells stand out. Now, on a New York Times puzzle, normally you don't need to worry about going to the lengths of checking pairs. Um, but I am wondering whether this was sent in because in this puzzle it's important somehow. Because I think most of you who've been following the channel for a while are very familiar with Snyder notation and, it, and the power of Snyder notation. So I'm wondering now if this puzzle, you know, it might have a a double in a row or a column or something like that, which is very hard for Snyder notation to pick up. It's very easy to pick up if you label all the cells that contain just two digits, but not easy to pick up if you exclusively rely on this sort of notation. Um, so let me just remind myself, four, seven, eight. So this square is a four or an eight. Mm, that square can be three things. Column seven, we need a two, seven, ah, uh, oh, ah, oh, that is a seven or a nine. Okay, well there you go. So there is a seven, nine pair in row two. And that's a seven or an is that a seven or an eight here? And this is there's loads of stuff going on now. Whoa. Um it's not Let's not worry about that. I might come back to this column in a minute. But let's just check uh, row two for a bit longer. So now we've effectively got six numbers in this row as well with this seven, nine pair we've discovered. So we've got three, four, and six to place. That's no good. Huh, okay. All right. So there's nothing in the open cells in the row. But this, the existence of the nine pair, so we know there's a nine in either of these two squares means there cannot be a 9 in either of these two squares. Therefore, there is a 9 there, and we get an extra pencil mark. Let's put that in down there. Ah, and with the 2s here, we've got 2 and a 2, we get a 2-9 pair down here. Uh, that might be important. Uh, so what do we need? 3, 4... No, not 3, 4, and 8, 3, 6, and 8. Oh, okay, so this square. So we let me just fully notate it to show you what I'm talking about. The, these are the possibilities for the three cells that are in the open here. And you can see if we study this cell more carefully, there's a 6 and a 3 already in the row. So this square can only be an 8. So let's put that in. Uh, now this might be nice. Eight, eight. Ah. Well, this does give us a 3-6 combo again, with loads of these rows and columns being filled with effectively six digits. So now we need 2, 8, and 9 to complete row 7. Mm, that's no good. Ah, this square. <laughs> OK. So we've got a series of squares that are being limited by these pairs. So this is this is can only be a two now because we have an eight and a nine in in the column already. 
So let's just make sure we. I am going to label this. So this is an eight or a nine, and this is an eight or a nine, and this is a two. Which means what exactly? Well, that resolves this two pair there. This has to be a two. That means this square up here must be a two because we know the two is in this square or this square, but we know that this one below it is only a seven or a nine. So this must be a two. So two, two, what's going on down here then? We've got a two in one of those two squares. Can we tell which one? Mm, not sure. I'm now going to check column seven again. We need seven, eight, and nine. So what have we got here? This is seven or a nine. This is seven or an eight. This is seven, eight, or nine. I don't really want to, I certainly don't want to label triples. Uh, so I'm not going to label triples. We're not going to do that. Um, ah, okay, yeah, but the, now we can, the twos matter. This, this two here and this two here operate on this three by three block look. So that we can pencil mark twos into one of those two squares so therefore this is not a two this must be a nine and this must be a two so that's a two and that's a nine uh, that and that is going to matter for this column we were looking at this column seven eight and nine so this can only be a seven or an eight now because we were looking at this being a seven eight or a nine now it can only be a seven eight now we've got two, a seven eight pair in column seven this must be a 9. And therefore this is the 7. That was its counterpart that we found earlier. That gives us a nice 1, 7 double over here. I was just checking the uniqueness point. I'm sure many of you were already doing that as well. I'm not going to use it yet. 3, 6, 3, 6 into these two squares. Um, so now we've effectively got 7 numbers across the top row. We need a 4 and a 9 into position. Nah, that can be either way around. 6, 9, 9, 9, 7, 8, 7, 3, 6. I feel we're almost solving this now. I just need to spot one more thing, I suspect. Let's pencil mark sevens into those two squares. Five, nine, four, six. What is the next number here? This is where it gets tricky as well because you, I've sort of polluted all of the pencil marks that I've been using. So I'm never quite sure how much I can rely on everything I'm looking at. So if we need two and nine, ah, okay, yeah, this nine here is forcing uh, column two. So we still need to put a 9 into column 2 and it can't go here anymore. So the only place it can go is there and that I think will finish the puzzle. That gives us a 2 and a 9 like that. This now must be a 2 down here. I don't know whether I labelled the 8s here. I think we're part of standard pencil mark notation. So I think we have to trust that that is true. Uh, we need 3, 4 and 6 to complete so that actually, this is a 3 or a 6 here. This 9 resolves these two 9s though, that's just a good order to do that. You can see we've now got 3, 6 pair into these two squares, so this square must be a 4. That means this is a 4. This must be 3 or 6, assuming everything I've been doing so far is sensible. That gives us a 4-7 combo here. And we need 3, 6 and 8 to complete. We don't know anything about 8s, but I probably would just do that just for the sake of avoiding any sort of complication. Um, this is a, I tell you what, one thing I'm feeling as I'm solving this is this does not feel like a standard New York Times hard puzzle at all to me. Most New York Times hard puzzles uh, rely on these, these hidden triples 
And unless I've missed something, which I could have done, um, uh, I'm not seeing, I'm not seeing that here at all. Uh, so right now, let's finish this off if we can. So one seven nine along here. No, that's all looking totally possible. Oops. Ah, the three nine pair here. It means this couldn't be a three, so that that does finish it. Eight six three. Six, six, this must be a six now. That resolves the six, three at the top. That means this is a three down at the bottom again. Um, okay. Still working okay, I think. Four, seven, eight into these positions. Well, that must be a four, seven. This is the only position an eight can go. Just unwinding pencil marks there, not doing anything clever at all. You see now down here, this must be a seven. Still need to put a seven into this block. It can only go in one position now. That's here. Uh, this now must be a six because we already have a three and a nine here. And we need three, six and nine to complete column one. So this must be the six. Therefore, this is a three, this is a six, this is a six and this is a three. Again, not doing anything clever here other than unwinding what we already know. Um, now this must be the 9, this is an 8, this must be an 8, this is a 6, this is a 3, uh, 1, 4 and 9 to complete this, so this is 9, 1, 4 like so, 4, 7, 7, 1. So I am not surprised at all that somebody's asked for this puzzle, this, this felt very odd. Um, and far more difficult than the usual New York Times fare, even at the hard level. And actually, unusually, I think it was quite important that we labelled a couple of the doubles that were appearing. This 7-9 in particular was absolutely critical. So thank you very much for sending that in. I hope this was a useful run through. And we'll be back soon with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic. Um, if you do enjoy the content, please do subscribe to the channel. Please give us a thumbs up. That We really appreciate that. Uh, yeah, and as I say, we'll be back with another edition very soon.